The story of the 1954 FIFA World Cup revolves around two nations, Hungary, who were considered the clear favourites to win the tournament due to their golden era, and West Germany, a nation that was still dealing with the aftermath of their actions during World War II and competed with little confidence. Unbeknownst to both teams, they were about to participate in a World Cup that would set multiple world records and culminate in the miracle of Bern. This is the story of the 1954 FIFA World Cup. To understand why Hungary was so confident, we need to go back to the 25th of November 1953. On that day, Hungary played a friendly match against England in Wembley, which later became known as the match of the century. Hungary were the reigning Olympic champions and had an impressive unbeaten run of 24 games. Despite this, England was still the favourite to win. England had only lost once at home to foreign opposition, which was against the Republic of Ireland in 1949. The match was attended by a crowd of 105,000 who witnessed one of the best attacking displays in history. Led by their talisman, Berens Puskas, Hungary dismantled England 6-3. Hungary had 35 shots compared to England's 5, and the victory was no fluke. In 1954, England arranged a rematch in Budapest, hoping to avenge their defeat. Unfortunately, Hungary inflicted England's worst ever defeat, winning 7-1. Leading up to the World Cup, Hungary had won 24 out of 28 games, with 4 draws and scored 119 goals in the process. They would later become known as the Golden Team. Switzerland and Uruguay qualified automatically as hosts and champions respectively. The tournament featured 16 teams, with 11 from Europe, two from the Americas and one from Asia. A total of 37 teams attempted to qualify, but there were some controversies, with some teams withdrawing or having their entries rejected. Argentina withdrew for the third World Cup in a row. Spain and Turkey played a playoff to decide the winner of their group. Turkey was picked out and Spain was eliminated after a 2-2 draw and drawing lots. Before moving on to the main tournament, I would appreciate it if you could hit that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications. The World Cup was hosted in Switzerland from June 16th to July 4th. The 16 teams were divided into four groups, each containing two seeded and two unseeded teams. The seeded teams did not play against each other, which meant that only four matches were played in each group. If the score was level after 90 minutes, extra time was played. The top two teams from each group proceeded to the quarterfinals. Group 1 had seeded teams Brazil and France, along with Yugoslavia and Mexico. Brazil won 5-0 against Mexico, while France lost to Yugoslavia 1-0. Brazil and Yugoslavia drew 1-1, qualifying with three points each. France got knocked out. Group 2 had seeded teams Hungary and Turkey, alongside West Germany and South Korea. Spain lost their seeded spot to Turkey, who beat them in qualifying. West Germany won their first match against Turkey 4-1 in Bern. Hungary started their campaign with a 9-0 victory against South Korea, with five players scoring. They introduced new scientific coaching and tactics, which were later adopted throughout the sport. Their manager, Gustav Scherbes, is recognized for three key innovations. Firstly, the coach implemented a club-like mentality which meant that the Hungarian players had regular training sessions together and followed a strict fitness regime. Secondly, Hungary's tactical concept involved a deep-lying centre-forward that required both the centre-forward and wingers to drop back into midfield when necessary. This flexible 3-2-3-2 formation allowed for fluid movement between attacking and defensive formations, creating problems for centre-backs who were used to man-marking. Thirdly, the coach encouraged his players to be adaptive and understand all positions. Berens Pushkas commented, When we attacked, everyone attacked, and in defence, it was the same. We were the prototype for total football. During the second round of the World Cup games, Turkey defeated South Korea in Geneva with a score of 7-0, with Buran scoring a hat-trick. Meanwhile, Hungary versus West Germany turned out to be a crucial game. German coach Sepp Herberger a former member of the Nazi party, took a pragmatic approach to the game, knowing the odds of beating Hungary were slim. He made the controversial decision to change the starting lineup, resting many of the starters, as he assumed Turkey would beat South Korea and they would end up level on points, requiring a playoff. 
He also played the team out of position to help disguise their strengths. However, this decision led to the worst defeat in Germany's World Cup history, with Hungary winning 8-3 in Basel. Kocsis was the star with four goals. The most important moment of the match came in the 70th minute, when Hungary was already 5-1 up. Puskas was viciously fouled from behind by German defender Werner Liebrich. The tackle caused a fracture to Puskas's ankle. According to Puskas, the tackle was in frustration, although German captain Fritz Walter disputed this, claiming that Puskas just landed awkwardly. Puskas would spend the rest of the tournament hoping to be fit for the final. Herberger's strategy paid off, as West Germany faced Turkey in a playoff in Zurich three days later. He brought back his well-rested starters, and they comfortably won 7-2, qualifying for the final eight. Uruguay and Austria were seeded in Group 3, while Scotland and Czechoslovakia were unseeded. Uruguay beat Czechoslovakia 2-0, while Austria defeated Scotland 1-0. In the second round, Uruguay defeated Scotland 7-0, and Austria won 5-0 against Czechoslovakia. Scotland was eliminated without scoring a goal. Group 4 consisted of the seeded England and Italy, along with Switzerland and Belgium. England sought redemption after their disastrous performance in the 1950 World Cup, and thus, they took this tournament much more seriously by implementing a stricter training regime that started earlier. In their opening game against Belgium in Basel, the match was an absolute classic. Belgium took a surprise early lead after five minutes, but England showed their class by scoring two goals in the first half and then a third in the 63rd minute. They were in full control and had a deserved 3-1 lead. However, the Belgians changed the game's momentum by scoring two quick goals due to defensive mistakes by England. The game went into extra time and Nat Lofthaus would score his second goal of the game in the 91st minute. Despite England's pressure, Belgium held on and the game ended in a 4-4 draw in extra time, with Jimmy Dickinson scoring a headed own goal due to a defensive mistake by England. Italy lost to Switzerland in their first game, but won against Belgium. They needed England to beat Switzerland to have a chance of progressing. Luckily, England won, and Italy and Switzerland finished level with two points. A playoff was needed to determine which team would proceed to the quarterfinals. Italy was surprisingly beaten 4-1 by Switzerland. Strangely, there were no seeded teams for the quarterfinals of the World Cup, which meant that two top-performing teams from the group stage could end up playing against each other. On June 26th, the first two quarterfinal games took place. One of these games saw Uruguay take on England in Basel, a match that was pivotal for both teams. Uruguay, with two World Cup wins under their belt, was considered a top-tier team, while England had a reputation as the master of football. Uruguay started the match strongly and managed to score a goal just five minutes in. England fought back and equalised in the 16th minute. However, Uruguay continued to attack relentlessly and scored two more goals, just before and after half-time, to take a 3-1 lead. England managed to get another goal back, but it was not enough, as Uruguay secured a 4-2 victory in the 78th minute. For England, it was another disappointing World Cup campaign as they crashed out of the tournament in the quarterfinals with just one win from three games. On June 26, Austria and Switzerland played a football match in Lausanne that set a world record. Switzerland scored three goals quickly, but Austria made an unbelievable comeback, scoring five goals before half-time. The final score was 7-5 to Austria. This was the first ever 3-0 comeback in football history and the highest scoring World Cup match ever, featuring a hat-trick from both Austria's Wagner and Switzerland's Hugi. On the 27th of June, the third and fourth quarterfinals took place. West Germany played against Yugoslavia in Geneva and it turned out to be a highly competitive match. Ultimately, the Germans were able to secure a 2-0 victory, which secured their spot in the semi-finals. The last quarterfinal match was played by Hungary and Brazil, both of whom were considered strong contenders for the World Cup. The match was highly anticipated and it could have been the final itself. This brought to light the flaw in the format of the tournament. In a match that would become known as the Battle of Bern, Hungary took the lead with two quick goals. Brazil scored a penalty in the first half, but the game was marked by numerous fouls. Hungary dominated the second half 
got a penalty in the 60th minute and scored it to take a 3-1 lead. Brazilian officials and journalists invaded the pitch to protest the decision, but the police removed them. Brazilian Julinho scored a goal, making the score 3-2, but both Bosnik and Santos were sent off after fighting broke out. Kosic then scored his second goal, giving Hungary a 4-2 win. The game saw 42 fouls and three red cards. In the first semi-final, West Germany faced Austria on June 30th in Basel. The match proved to be a one-sided affair as Germany easily defeated Austria 6-1, securing their place in their first ever World Cup final. Uruguay and Hungary played their semi-final match in Lausanne. Hungary led by 2-0 at half-time, but Uruguay scored in the 75th minute. A late equaliser from Holberg resulted in the game going into extra time with a score tied at 2-2. Hungary continued to dominate possession, scoring two more goals via Kocsis and securing their place in the final with a 4-2 victory over Uruguay. This was the first time Uruguay had ever lost a World Cup match. Austria won the traditional third-place playoff by beating Uruguay 3-1. The final was held on July 4th at Bern's Wankdorf Stadium. The build-up to the final suggested that a Hungarian victory was inevitable, especially with the return of Puskas despite concerns over his injury. However, German coach Sepp Herberger made tactical adjustments to neutralize Hungary's strengths. A crucial change was having a midfielder mark Hungary's centre-forward, Hide Kuti. This prevented Hide Kuti from dragging a defender out of position when he dropped back into midfield. On the day of the match, there was heavy rain, which the German team named Fritz Walterweather, after their star player who was known to perform exceptionally well in rainy conditions. The German team also had an advantage over their opponents as they wore special Adidas boots that had exchangeable studs. This allowed them to wear their regular boots with less impact from the rain. Despite everything, the Hungarian team had a strong start and dominated the first few minutes of the game. Puska scored the opening goal just six minutes after Kocsis's blocked shot fell to him. Two minutes later, Zibor took advantage of a bad back pass to the German goalkeeper and added a second goal. It seemed like all the pre-match predictions were going to come true and Hungary would win the World Cup. But Germany was not done yet. Two minutes after the second goal, Max Morlock scored the second one from a close-range cross, making the score 2-1. Then, in the 18th minute, Fritz Walter crossed a corner which found Rahn and he leveled the score. It's remarkable that within just 18 minutes of play, four goals had already been scored. During the first half of the match, Hungary had a dominant performance. They had several opportunities to score, but either German goalkeeper Tony Turek made a save or the ball hit the post. The second half saw more of the same as Hungary continued to attack the German goal. Turek made save after save, and the German defenders made numerous goal line clearances. It wasn't until the 72nd minute that Germany had their first chance of the second half, which came from a corner kick taken by Fritz Walter. In the 84th minute, Rahn received the ball from a cross and outwitted the defence by faking a pass before scoring his second goal of the match. Despite the odds, the Germans were now ahead 3-2. Hungary continued to dominate the last few minutes of the game, and Puskas appeared to have scored the equaliser, but it was controversially ruled out for offside. In the final minute of the match, Sibor had a final chance to level the score, but Turek made another save. The game ended, and with it, the Golden Team's unbeaten run came to an end. West Germany had become world champions for the very first time. The match would have a profound effect on both nations. In Germany, the game became known as the Miracle of Bern, and it helped revitalize confidence after their terrible actions during World War II. German historian Joachim Fest commented, It was a kind of liberation for the Germans from all the things that weighed down upon them after the Second World War. July 4th, 1954 is in certain aspects the founding day of the German Republic. For Hungary, this was the end of them as a football superpower. They would never again come close to winning the World Cup, and the golden team to this day is regarded as one of the best teams ever. Worse was the reaction in Hungary. The nation had expected to celebrate a victory, but instead, hundreds of thousands poured into the streets and started to protest against the Soviet communist regime, which had been using the golden team to boost its reputation. Hungary goalkeeper Grosic commented, 
In those demonstrations, I believe, lay the seeds of the 1956 uprising. That uprising would prove the end of the Golden Team, as the likes of Puskas and Kocic would go on to play for Real and Barcelona respectively, and only four members of the team played in the 58 World Cup. Notable stats include Hungarian Kocic winning the Golden Boot with 11 goals in five games. Hungary holds the record for most goals scored in one World Cup with 27. They scored them in just five games, an average of 5.4 per game. There were 140 goals scored in just 26 games, resulting in an average of 5.38 goals per match. This remains the highest average goal per game for any World Cup tournament. Well, there you have it. That was the story of the 1954 FIFA World Cup. My next video will be on the 1958 World Cup, so please do click like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to learn more.